There we are. We're almost set up. That's almost all there is to a Kelvin dropper. You get a stream of water here, stream of water here. This will go into this bucket, but it will go in through this wire. This one will go into this bucket, but it'll go in through this wire. And then you will generate about 10,000 volts difference between these two. And it's one of those things that, unless you've actually ever seen the machine working, you just wouldn't believe they exist. Here's a lot of powerfully impressive junk here. Um, so what I'm going to be doing here is making a Kelvin dropper, uh, which if you've never heard of one of those, it just has two streams of water and between them they generate yeah, a few thousand volts. And uh, there are explanations as to how they work. I'm not entirely sure why I believe them, which is why I've had the high-speed camera out looking at things that are about the size of a pinprick happening in a less than ten thousandth of a second. But anyway, um, so it's a sort of variant on this guy who is a Wimshurst machine, uh, which many of you might say, I'll go on to making the Kelvin dropper in just a second. Uh, when you know what you're doing, they take fully seconds to make. If you don't, they're like black magic. They really are sort of fairly tricky to get to work. Let me see if I actually see what's happening on here. That's super. Right. So, uh, with a Wimsers machine, if you're lucky, they charge up straight away. And this one's not doing it. All right. So, they charge up straight away. You can sort of kick start them by just getting a plastic cap, rubbing it on your hair, and then, there we go. Right. So these guys are, let's bring you around, dang it, better view that. Those are your Wimbushurst Sparky Boys, and, uh, as a general rule, a uh, centimeter of air to break down the air such that it, it conducts is about, oh yeah, it's about 10,000 volts. So we're at, yeah, lots of volts there. Uh, these things you get from China for about um, 50 bucks. Um, so they're kind of fun. So we're going to make a sort of variant on that um, using just two streams of water so let's see if i can get that nicely set up a minor bit of reorganization so this is my little rather high powered torch it's fantastic for uh you need lots of light on the small things like with a high-speed camera right so these are my two tubes you can get away with almost anything for certain I've made many of these where you just have a I don't know, you just have a pop bottle with two holes burned in the side so it leaks out both sides a couple of metal rings that'll work fine um, this is a somewhat more sophisticated bot uh, version. So here I've got two polyethylene tubes uh, mounted up um, in an insulated form. Uh, There's no real way for charge to leak in and out these things. Uh, at the bottom here, these are lure lock. Um, yeah, these boys. So I have a, yeah, you can get these for about, you can get big bags of them of various sizes uh, from China for next to nothing. So I have red ones, green ones, and um, yeah, green looks good. So I'm going to go for green. And this basically determines the size of the stream. So if I take a look, there we go. 
So you see that one's got a fairly big hole in, the other one not so much. There you, go, you see it there. Good. So uh, I'm going to go for the smaller ones because then these guys will drain more slowly. And there we are. Now we will need. Uh, Get rid of me water. Something along these lines. This is the simplest way to do it. You just need a bowl. Let me zoom all the way out here. Yeah, there you go. You need a bowl with a metal wire. And it doesn't need to be a loop. Loops tend to be better, they don't bleed away charge as much. So that's all you need for generating your, your 10,000 watts. You don't need even this as it turns out. And you will need two of those. So there we've got our, these are going to be our two streams. And these are useless now. Balls are fairly useless. So to insulate them, I'm just going to use a bit of polyethylene, which, um, yeah, I mean, you can get away with almost anything. In fact, do I even need, in fact, I think. I don't even need the baby lab jacks on this one. Like there we are. We're almost set up. That's almost all there is to a Kelvin dropper. You get a stream of water here, stream of water here. This will go into this bucket, but it will go in through this wire. This one will go into this bucket, but it'll go in through this wire. And then you will generate about 10,000 volts difference between these two. And it's one of those things that, unless you've actually ever seen the machine working, you just wouldn't believe they exist. Now, I think our Kelvin worked out how, the, uh, how to work these things, but um, yeah, he was clearly quite a smart guy, was Kelvin. Uh, so that needs to be under there somewhere. And uh, this this is the the is somewhat fiddly bit is that's not far off and that's not far off either. Good. Now how do we know that we're going to get ten thousand volts difference between these two? That's my background for something else I was filming. How do we know we're going to get ten thousand volts difference between these two? Well. If I connect this one to this one, you'll start getting sparks off it. Very much like the Wimshurst machine. Right, so I think we're almost ready to go now. There's one really critical thing if you're actually making one of these, and that's that where it goes from a stream to droplets is a really critical area. So I'm going to pull you in nice and close on one of these. First of all, I'm just going to tank him up and so you actually see what's going on so i'm just going to pour some water on this one that's perfect and if we're lucky i should be able to <coughs> zoom you in yeah focus on that there we go that's nice so you see the bit where it goes from a solid stream to droplets is just about there. All right, and there's actually a really important region. You get this on a high speed camera, you'll see that's a completely unbroken stream. Down about there somewhere is where it breaks into droplets. And where it breaks into droplets, that's where you need this ring. It doesn't have to go around the stream or anything, um, but it's... Um, it just just close to it is good enough right so let's see if i can now get stream number two going and let's tank both of these up to full and if we're lucky almost immediately weird stuff starts happening you hear that it's changed its tone and that means it's changed its tone but down here, right, I'm going to turn the autofocus to something a little more useful. If I pull this down, you'll see it's all spraying out there. 
and unlucky. Okay, Earth did by accident. So what I've done is I've just connected a wire um, on there, and hopefully it'll charge up again. Oh yeah, no, it's charging. And as it charges, you should find is I can get sparks. Yeah, I yeah, am sparks. Um, it needs a bit of a refill. It does run through the water fairly quickly. Uh, but once I get a decent refill. Him at the back. Yeah, beautiful. So that's basically how they work. Alright, now if I earth this one, yeah, I got a bit of shock off that one. You see, it kills that one. If I earth this one, it straightens out that. And as they charge up again, and if I earth one, shock. Yeah. So this is being spread out by the charge on that ring and if I touch the other basin here I get a shock and it goes straight so that's the basic design for the uh, Kelvin dropper now what they'll what you'll see in the book is they'll tell you that this has to be a circuit connecting that one to that one and vice versa but now comes the interesting question here how is the water actually carrying the charge around on all of this and well, yeah, what, what if that water wasn't actually in contact with the metal there? Would that make any difference at all? Well, I can sort of answer that. So what I'm going to do is just put a plastic bowl inside the um, metal one. So now there's no obvious circuit on these things, yeah? They're going to run. They're going to have to run on capacitance and fill them up again and let's see what happens now and instantly you can see it's all charging up again so I'm just sure that really is actually all charged still and that uh, you know the Yeah, you see it's all spreading out on the on the droplets like that. And if I touch one of these, kills one. If I touch the other one, it just gives me a shock. Shock, shock, and we're all neutral again. And almost immediately it starts charging up again. So you don't actually need and you do this with big bowls. In fact, you can even do this with bowls, plastic bowls, with just the the, the, the wire taped to the outside of the plastic bowls and it still works just fine so there's all sorts of interesting stuff that happens with this um, and uh, so th this is sort of called Kelvin's thunderstorm and yeah, there are people who say they, there's an understanding of it but not deeply convinced by any of it Anyway, so uh, that's that's Kelvin's thunderstorm.